Join us for this virtually possible event as we transform Niagara to the New Orleans of the North. Get your mask, beads, baubles, and feathers on. Enjoy Cajun and Creole food, classic cocktails, and dance the night away. Celebrate with us on your porch, in your garden, in your living room, or in your driveway. And wait for the band to parade by. Niagara's Summer Mardi Gras, July 18, 2020. It's coming. Just watch and see. The TD Niagara Jazz Festival presents Niagara's Summer Mardi Gras Sessions. Join us online every Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m. as we bring new Orleans to the north. Direct from the Crescent City, Dance in Man 504, Windex Pete, Christopher Butcher of the Heavyweights Brass Band, and more. Featuring mask making, Cajun cooking demos, musical spoons, second line dance steps, cocktail demos, funky fashion tips, and musical clips. Tune in for these free sessions on our Facebook or YouTube channels, Jazz Niagara. Then we'll celebrate Niagara Summer Mardi Gras together this summer on July 18th. It's virtually possible. Just watch and see. Niagara Summer Mardi Gras sessions are brought to you in part by TD, the City of St. Catharines, and the Town of Niagara-on-the-Lake. Good evening, welcome. <laughs> TD Niagara Jazz Festival here presenting Niagara's online Summer Mardi Gras sessions. This is part nine. It's the grand finale of these sessions that we've been doing from, well, nine weeks now. Uh, my name is Juliet Dunn. I'm the co-creator, executive director, and artistic producer of the festival, and I'm thrilled to be here with you this evening. We're so excited. Mardi Gras is five days away, six days away. It's coming up. It's this Saturday. Uh, it's online. So we may have a few VIPs gathering. We're still waiting to figure that out, but it's definitely online and you can tune in from anywhere in the world. It'll be going from 3 p.m. Eastern, Eastern Central Time. Uh, no, Eastern Time, sorry. Eastern Daylight Time from 3 p.m. until 11 p.m. And we'll be going back and forth from here in Niagara to New Orleans. So no one better to get us in the mood for the feel of New Orleans but Davis Rogan and his lovely partner Stephanie Rogan and we're going to bring them up for you shortly so they're down there in the Crescent City and uh, Davis well first of all you may know about Davis from a character that is based upon him in the the series called Treme so he's going to tell you more about that and um, he he's a musician he's a He's a man of many, many talents, and tonight he's going to be sharing different cocktails uh, with you and I and everyone with Stephanie, but he's also a musician, so he's going to be playing some music too. It's so interesting because each time we've done one of these sessions with these lovely new contacts that we've made in New Orleans through Christopher Butcher, every single time we'll be focusing on uh, something like cuisine or cocktails, but everybody seems to be involved in the music scene, which is really great and it just kind of shows how rich the culture is down there. So Davis draws his musical inspiration from Professor Longhair and Fats Domino and does every New Orleans rhythm and blues, uh, as does every, sorry, New Orleans rhythm and blues player. And what separates him is his lyrics. So you'll get a little taste of that. He's, he's witty, he's got irony and self-deprecation and he echoes Randy Newman. But the wry observations about life, humanity and New Orleans are uniquely his. And he's going to tell us about what's going on down there in New Orleans right now. Because we're all still in lockdown and things are slowly opening up. I know here in Niagara, we're not opening up as fast as we'd like to, but it's good to stay safe. But a lot of the rest of Ontario is in stage three. We're still in stage two. And well, let's bring on our guests and uh, let's talk about that right off the bat. So here is Davis to start us off. Hey, Davis, he's, hey. he's busy sharing this. That's great, I'm yay, busy. you're sharing I'm, with all I'm your fans. Work. I'm at work sharing with all of my fans, so here we Excellent. go. Excellent. I love I'm it. just two keystrokes. No worries. This and I'm pulling up our little fun brand. There we go. The Mardi Gras, Mardi Gras brand. And uh, perfect. <laughs> oh, I love it. 
I'm just looking to make sure I have everything else lined up, and I think I do. Hey, if you need more time, I can play a little no, bit no, of music. No, 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 no you're I good. Think we're good. Let's 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 sure. let let's us, do this. Let's say do this. Let's do this. Okay, I would like to bring on my lovely better half, Mrs. Uh, Stephanie Rogan. Perfect. Excellent. And, uh, so. Hi, hey, guys. Stephanie. Welcome. Here's, here's Stephanie. Hello. This is okay. so fun. Oh, cocktails! Yay! Yes. So, <laughs> That's the name of the game. Um, we're here. I just want to tell you a little bit about the downstairs space that you're seeing. Okay. Um, this was a place that was built in the 1840s. There was a furniture designer named Prudent Lamard, and this was his original studio. But in the late 70s and early 80s, this place was actually the birthplace of the brass band revolution. And um, for those of you who are familiar with the Rebirth Brass Band, oh, I love the cocktail. For those of you who are familiar with the Rebirth Brass Band, this is the first, that egg right there, the trumpet popping out of the egg, that logo on the wall, is the first time that that Rebirth logo was ever represented or, or made anywhere. So we're here wow. and, and and behind this green door was Trombone Shorty's childhood bedroom. So, Come on. So, so how, did, how did you score this apartment? Is it an apartment? This is a building. A house. Uh, it's yeah, this is a house. So Stephanie and I live upstairs. This is the studio. And then we've got a... Uh, We've got a we've got a short term rental which we might be renting to people at some point. But at this point, we've got someone in here full time because you know COVID. And there's an yeah. apartment in the back. And, but it's it's a building. It's a compound. It's DJ Davis's mansion in the ghetto. Wow. So so do you share this studio or this is all yours? The studio. Oh, this is all mine. But, okay. You know, I, I yeah, share yeah. It with whoever it's whoever I'm collaborating with. But anyway, nice. cheers everybody out there in cheers. TV land. And cheers. Hey, <laughs> I've got wine. Niagara wine. It's not a cocktail. What are you drinking, by the way? We are drinking. Manhattans. This is actually um, mm. a blood orange Manhattan. Ah. I've been in my copious amounts of spare time that I have found myself with <laughs> due to these circumstances. Um, I've been using my boredom to infuse bourbon. So ah. this is a. Oh, so we're going to talk about infusing. So these are uh, what, some of the interesting things wow. that I just said is uh, uh, about cocktails. Yeah. Is that the cocktail was originally invented in New Orleans because it was a colony and the cognac they were getting was so crappy that they needed to mix it with something so it could be palatable. Ah. So the idea about like, you must buy this or you must buy that is actually a cocktail is a way to make cheap liquor taste okay. Now, the idea that you could all do it with high end stuff and it could all be fancy and expensive is it's something people can buy into. But really we cannot emphasize enough if we go into this, that the cheap ingredients can be made into something interesting. And that's kind of the, that was kind of the genesis of the cocktail was it was it was you were in a colony and the French colony and the, and the shipping was so bad and is you know mm. they, they never send the good stuff to the colonies so um why so, would they yeah <laughs> so anyway Stephanie was talking about huh. infusing bourbon so we can get a, a bourbon and you don't need a super fancy one you can just we were using um Buffalo Traces which is cheap down here and so right. go ahead back to you I guess they're not your sponsor <laughs> uh, no oops so so how do you infuse it. You can use basically any kind of flavors that you want. So I I did this one with blood oranges and cocoa nibs and just Ooh. soak it in the bourbon for, um, this was about a week. But really, you can just put it all in a jar, shake it up a little bit every day. I worry about germs. I worried about germs way before any of this ever happened. So yeah. I keep it in the fridge. But some people just do it at room temperature. Um and just shake it up a little bit each day, and then after a couple of days, start sampling it, see if it's strong enough. If you want it to be a little stronger, leave it longer. Um, wow. I did another one with toasted walnuts, uh, raisins, cinnamon sticks, and vanilla beans that basically ended up tasting like carrot cake in a glass. Oh my, and that was a week as well in the fridge? No, that one only took a couple of days. Wow. That was, that was pretty quick. That was pretty intense. Pretty You're quick. really using your time well. <laughs> well, you gotta do something. No, that's really cool. So I never would have, because I'm not really a big fan of whiskey or bourbon, but the way you're describing those infused ones, I definitely... Use whatever spirit you like, too. Mm. I tend to like whiskey, but, you know, you can use gin, especially this time of year, you can make some really refreshing summer drinks. Very cool. Gin. So now you took that, so you had blood orange, and what else was in the one you did with the blood orange? Cocoa nibs. Cocoa nibs, and mm -hmm. then what did you mix it with to make the cocktail you're drinking tonight? So oh, this is a Manhattan. Yes. Oh, a Manhattan. You did say that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a basically a perfect Manhattan, but made with the, the infused bourbon. And then um, cool. because I Manhattan is 
Yes, Manhattan, if, if for people who don't know, Manhattan is uh, bourbon or rye with um, the perfect, for make a, bleh, to make a perfect Manhattan, it's a equal parts uh, dry and sweet vermouth. And is that the one you put a, a maraschino cherry? Because I used to bartend back in the yes. day. <laughs> maraschino cherry in like a whiskey glass. A whiskey glass. Was that a Manhattan? Uh, yes. Um, right. Some people do put a cherry. Some people put a twist of lemon. I actually put, um, I don't know if you can see in there. I put a cherry and then I floated a dried blood orange wheel on the top because I'm a big fan of garnishes. I nice. also really love that, you, you know, when your garnish has soaked in the booze for a while, it becomes like its own little treat. Like when you were a kid and you would get a scoop of ice cream and they also put a cookie in it and you felt like you were getting an extra dessert. It's like totally it's a snack at the end of your beverage. Oh my gosh. You guys were the perfect choice for this, uh, this segment. <laughs> wow. So how long have you guys been uh, partners in crime? Married seven years. Yes. And uh, together, together eight, nearly nine. nine. Nearly nine, yeah. Nearly nine. And, you, and you're both originally from New Orleans? Or? No, no. Oh, I am okay. import from California. Oh. And David? I'm a fifth generation New Orleanian, and I decided to sort of like, you know, let's get some diversity to the bloodline. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> so where did you meet? And you can stop me anytime if I'm being too intrusive. Sure, sure. uh, yeah, We're having cocktails, so it's yeah, like, you know. Paul is, is a singer-songwriter from New Orleans. He uh, attained a bit of national notoriety in a group called Cowboy Mouth. Uh, but <laughs> post-Katrina, he just sort of went into a singer-songwriter kind of thing. And I was uh, checking out, I was at a Paul Sanchez show, and he introduced me, and I, I think I sang a song with him or something. And then at the end of the show, I was just uh, in the alleyway at the end of the show just talking with Paul and... And this creepy girl came up to you. <laughs> no, I was I was in town uh, visiting with my mom. Hi, mom, if you're watching. Nice. Um, and uh, you know, I like talking to people. I was a fan of Davis's music. My poor mom is a bit shyer than I am, and I just kind of dragged her. I was like, we're gonna go meet Davis now, and you know, jumped on him after the show. Hi, I want to shake your hand. I really like your music, and we became and, friends, and it went from there. Yeah. Very nice. Right. Very nice. Davis, tell us a bit about your music. And I know we're going to have you play some live, and we even have sure. some pre-recorded. So tell me about it. Or um, tell us about it. Sure, you bet. Uh, I like. I kind of characterize the stuff. So in in the 90s, uh, I had a, a funk band, which was with a sousaphone for a bass and a three-piece horn section. And I was playing classic. Uh, I was playing organs and clavinets and stuff like that, and jumping up and down and rapping. And then uh, <laughs> that all kind of fell apart. And... Uh, but it was sort of like the pre pre trombone shorty pre big sam and everything. It was a, it was a band called All That. And it was some sort of a funk jazz brass mix. Cool uh, name. Our first record uh, we recorded in 1995, and the trumpet player on that was Bryce Miller. Mm. Yeah, just to you know, keep it tiny, shrinking your little world. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, nice. But anyway, yeah. So. Uh, in, in, in the aughts, I, I kind of switched over to something more like I could just do sort of like into my, you know, being old or whatever. I was going to sit down at the piano. So it's basically it's classic New Orleans rhythm and blues with a unique lyrical twist. So I play all the music I love, uh, some Professor Longhair, some Fats Domino, some, you know, and then um, I've written a bunch of tunes, which are sort of music that's styled in that vein. So it's, I say it's uh, classic New Orleans rhythm and blues with a unique lyrical twist. Nice. And would you? So would you normally perform solo then, piano vocals, or do you have a duo uh, trio? On how much money I have to split? Right. You know, uh, I I can I when I I played at Hughes Room in Toronto, I was with a oh. with, with a four piece um, with uh, Christopher Butcher. Oh, from the Heavyweights Bass Band. Nice. And yeah, he's so our yeah. our connect to you. He's, yes. He's our he's our man in New Orleans. He lives a couple blocks away. He he wanted to come by and, and be part of the broadcast. It's just that you know that a trombone. So speaking of aerosolized stuff, you know, it's just horns aren't yeah. safe. Yeah. <laughs> we have him next. Yeah, right. But we have him next uh, Friday anyway, so that's all good. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, this, yeah, we love yeah. Yeah. yeah, we do. We do. So, so sometimes solo, sometimes duo, trio, so, quartet. So like, mm. I do solo. My band, when I have a band, um, most often is is, is going to be drums upright bass and then one horn and i kind of keep it with one horn because then they don't they can play with their playing it's like two horns these were also i, I yeah. do love having a, a quintet actually i have a mark Levron on trumpet and travis Blotsky on saxophone but that's the band here in this situation I'm, i am i've got to say like if you played bass drum or if you played you know trombone or something you're just not so much you can do solo whereas no. it really is a kind of a, 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 a bit of a boom time for the guitar players and piano players so uh, Absolutely. Lucky to be in that number, I guess. 
Yeah, absolutely. Have you done so? So you guys went. We we went into official lockdown mid March. I think it was yeah. the thirteenth or the seventeenth. Same down there. Something we like that. Yeah. Twenty first, they made the announcement. The twenty okay. third, because my twenty third was my first day at home. Schools closed on the oh. schools closed on the fifteenth, and then and then they locked it down on the twenty third. So I've been doing. A, if anyone ever wants to check out on my Facebook page, Davis Rogan, uh, Central Standard Time. And time subject to change a little, so just keep an eye on the page. But I'm Wednesday evenings at six thirty Central Time, and yeah. Sunday mornings at twelve thirty. So, like a one hour show, or what, yeah. what do you do? I, 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 New Orleans one hour. I, I, I'm a professional musician one hour. It's forty five minutes. Forty five minutes. Good, good, yeah. good. And just sit. Are, yeah, exactly. Are you playing and talking, or just playing, or? Yeah, playing, playing and talking. I play, I play my originals, and then I've been interacting. I am, um, you know. Russell Honore, if any of you remember Hurricane Katrina, uh, Russell Honore was a, was a, a, a what general of what? Of the National Guard. He was a National Guard general who came down to New Orleans and kind of told all the National Guard people that, like, the citizens of New Orleans are also citizens of the United States. Put your guns down neck. So hmm. Russell Honore, is a, he's a bit of a local hero because he was the head of the National Guard right after Katrina. He should have run for president. He was watching hmm. me the other day. Clarence Frogman came in, the guy who wrote Ain't Got No Home, checked in the other day to watch. So I, I've been, I've been, it's just been a real thrill to see some of my, uh, some of my musical heroes and, 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 you know, political heroes uh, just checking in. In addition to all my old friends, you know, I, uh, I think, you know, since I've been doing a solo thing and traveling around the, the states and stuff, I've really made a lot of inroads in the Pacific Northwest, uh, Chicago and New York. So it's really great to see all these people in addition to people in the neighborhood checking in. So again, Very I would remind cool. people, Wednesdays at 6.30 Central Time and uh, Sundays at 12.30. And a lot Perfect. of international friends check in on the Sunday shows. And then we do the Sunday shows because of right the time now, difference, so, yeah. So shout out to um, Anne Schachter uh, checking in from Marseille. I, as my understanding, it is 11. It's a little bit after 11. In the, um, and I've got uh, Sergei from, uh, from the band I was talking about, Skimosh he's checking in from Britannia. Nice. So, uh, and uh, so, and of course, there's also Lori Kaufman checking in from right around the corner. So very nice, too. very nice. So, in a minute, I'd love to touch on your time in. You were talking about your time in France when we connected sure. the other day. But yeah. before we do, um, did you want to play a song now, or did you want to talk about France, or did you want to make a cocktail? Show us a cocktail. Why what are you feeling? Have... How do you how do you think? I think you should start with a song. We've been talking about your music. We should let the people Yeah, know. that's what okay, cool. Okay, go, go, I'm gonna go, do I'm a tune called out. I'm gonna do a tune called Damn You Sweet Bourbon and um Stephanie's gonna step out. Okay, and I'm gonna step out too. So I'm gonna leave you the floor. How's that? Okay, sounds great. Okay. <laughs> hey, thanks everybody. I'm gonna grab a little bit of a microphone and do a song about the perils of behind drinking too much brown liquor. It's a song I would call Damn You Sweet Bourbon. Get some of this. Thank you. 
focusing more on the, on the band Davis. Um, hold on, I'm gonna yeah. back to this. I, love, I do love the name of that band, All That. <laughs> oh, thanks so much. Yeah, it's a cool yeah, name. Uh, so, uh, we, uh, I, I, I guess in the early aughts, I started doing uh, more of the Davis thing, and then I wrote and recorded a record in 2005. And um, I actually sent the, uh, I had the master disc and all the artwork, and I put it in the US post office on August 28th, 2005, so it was lost in the floodwaters of the in the Loyola Avenue post office but the record got put out just the same and so the record came out and then <laughs> David Simon who's the guy who created the he was doing a show called The Wire at the time and he'd come to New Orleans to try and work on a show about New Orleans and he bought my record and he read the review of it he, he went picked up an offbeat magazine read the review of my record read the <laughs> article about me bought the record and then that's how I got the job which is merit which never happens in the music business but that's how uh, that's basically how I got the uh, the gig doing the TV show Treme. Wow. But, so that was the first record of the of the Davis stuff. It's called The Once and Future DJ. Yeah. And then uh, the second record was called The Real Davis. And that was one that I kind of wrote in the middle of uh, the middle of that time, you know, when you have a TV show based on you. And uh, you're sort of like, you know, writing records about that. And then the, the last <laughs> record. Yeah. Um, like last, everybody, right? Yeah, like <laughs> we can all relate. Was, exactly. You know, it's a common thing. And uh, <laughs> the, last, the last record was called uh, Ex Machina. So I fully admit that I'm overdue uh, because I haven't had anything out since oh, 2014. That's terrible. I'm, I'm way overdue, folks. My bad. I no you. worries. So tell us. Uh, oh, we, we, have a CD, we have a CD. We released a CD single, actually, oh. uh, called, called Mardi Gras Chicken. Oh, and nice. if you go to YouTube oh. and type in Davis Rogan and the words Mardi Gras Chicken, you well, should get to Mardi Gras Chicken. It's a, it's a song about a, a rooster named Renard. And if you know the grand career, uh, there's, a, there's a Cajun tradition that pays Acadian to the west of us of uh, setting a chicken loose during Mardi Gras. And if you catch the chicken, he goes in the pot. And if he gets away, he's free to go. So uh, I wrote a kind of a brass band tune about a chicken in the, in the, in the grand career. We... Stephanie Rogan lyrics. Yes. Oh, can Compared. we pull? Can we pull this tune up or yes, the one on YouTube? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I think ah, Bonnie's so great. Like, let me see if I can copy. Okay, I'm gonna put it up there. Can I copy and paste that? Bonnie, can you can you send that to me in Messenger so I can copy and paste the link? She's putting I, thumbs I up. Think <laughs> I don't think we need to take. It, I don't think we need to take time out of the show to. to no, no, no. She'll just pull it up while we chat. Oh, that's, that's, so, that's so awesome. I do want to point yeah. fact, though, about Damn You Sweet Bourbon before we move on from that, which is that that was actually the song that I danced with with my dad at our wedding because that's the kind of wedding it was. That's fun. That's oh, yeah. fun. When, so the wedding was, you said, what, seven years ago? Yeah. Nice. Where'd you, please tell me you got married in New Orleans. Oh, yeah. Okay. In, in, Audubon, in Audubon Park, there's a, a oak tree called the Washington Martha Oak because it's, you know, they say because it it's as old as Martha and George Washington, but it's actually more like 400 years old. So, right. Oh. Also called the Tree of Life. Also called the Tree of Life. So we got married under this great big tree, and then we had there's a there's a bar called the Hi Ho Lounge, um, and we uh we so we got married under a tree, and then two hours later we had a huge reception at the uh, at the Hi Ho Lounge, and um we had a, a crawfish etouffee and bread pudding. It was super simple. We, Which we, originally oh. got sent to the wrong place. But it was so it was it was great because we we had a really wonderful 
wedding and we didn't spend a ton of money just having a, having a great party. And uh, let's see, Paul Sanchez played, David Simon. Uh, oh, wow. Came and his son came and played. And uh, we had uh, uh, Don B, who was uh, the, the rapper who I, my character worked with in Treme, came and did some stuff. And uh, oh, who else? Johnny Sketch and the Dury Notes. And uh, Debbie Davis, Egg Jubilee, Egg Yolk Jubilee and, and John Boutte and Debbie Davis. So it was a, it was a cool little party. Very cool. Yeah, Very cool. Yeah, second our wedding. So how many people were at the wedding? We're not entirely sure because yeah. no one knows the piece anymore. And, um, that sounds like a good wedding. When you're not entirely sure how many people were there, that's got to be good. I'm 100% certain that some people just wandered in off the street, too. I had a wedding. My first wedding was like that <laughs> France. I, I worked at a bar and I had people saying weeks later, you had a great wedding. I'm like, who are you? <laughs> and why were you at my wedding? Oh my gosh. Hey, guess what? I, I, found the, I found your tune. So might as well just play it before we move on. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Okay, cool. So let me just do a quick screen share. Very cool. Uh, this show could go on for hours. You guys have so many stories to tell. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. So let me just, uh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, I had it. Just a second. Oh, oh, oh. I know I have it up here. Mardi Gras chicken. Okay, here it is. <laughs> and let me just maximize the screen. Okay. Oh, is my screen sharing or not yet? Yeah, yeah it is. No, okay, no, perfect. There's okay, no good. Video for it, so it's just, there's no it's just video. the chicken. Oh, okay, so we can just chat. Okay, let me find you guys back again. So we can just listen to it. <laughs> Very cool. I, I can see Bonnie backstage dancing. Louis was a Cajun and a Cajun true. Doing Mardi Gras like the Cajuns do. Had him a rooster named Renard. Bad little bird in the chicken yard. To race said, looky here, I'm gonna put you in the grand career. If you can get away, you're free and true. Catch you in the going in a chicken stew. Singing la di da, la di da. I'm nice. get you this Mardi Gras. Singing la di di, la di di. Who we gonna make a chicken fricassee? <laughs> Some help in the old barnyard. Ray asked the horse to hide him in the hay. Horse give the snort and the horse say. Ray asked the hawk if he would help him flee. Hawk said, Chicken, better you than me. Ray <laughs> said, Hawk, I'm running free. You're gonna wind up in the boucherie. Singing la di da. La di da. I'm getting away <laughs> this Mardi Gras. Singing la di di. La di di. Mardi Gras chicken, and you can't catch me. So here we are, Mardi Gras day on the bayou. Louis and the Cajuns in the grand career, riding their horses in hot pursuit of that plucky chicken, <laughs> Renard. Renard says, I can run to the woods, it's true, but there you've got the wolves and the Lugaru. Ray says, nah, man, I'm going to head to the swamp. Ray runs to the swamp where he finds more grief. Got a nine-foot gator with a six-inch teeth. Staring at the gator, gator look back, says, come here, little chicken, make me a nice snack. <laughs> Say, Mr. Gator, let's make a deal. Swallow me now and I ain't a whole meal. But if you can help me get away, I'll give you every egg that I ever lay. Singing la di da la I'm going to get away this Mardi Gras. Singing la di di Mardi Gras chicken and you can't catch me. So this music is a, a song called Oops, let me just pause hey, you for that. Hide in the gator's jaw. Sorry, Davis, what were you saying? Oh, I was talking over, uh, let's finish it and I'll talk. Finish it, okay, no worries, no worries. I didn't want to lose what you were saying. Poking out his eyes, here's what he saw. Louie right up, say, Cajuns, whoa. We got a nine foot gator here in the road. Better turn around and check our track. I'll bet you that chicken must have doubled back. If that's what I say, that's what I say. Cajun turns around and rides the other way. Singing la di da. La -da. I guess you got away this Mardi Gras. Singing la di di. At least we got a hawk for the boucherie. Alligator, I'm ahead along and I'll see you later. Gator says, Remember your promise, Ray. Give me every egg that you ever lay. Ray says, I won't lie, huh? I won't beg, huh? but I'm a rooster and I don't lay eggs. Wow. I kept my promise, but I got you, bro. Cause I'm a free bird this Mardi Gras. Singing la di da. La -da. I'm gonna get away this Mardi Gras. Singing la di da. Mardi Gras chicken and you
You can't you catch me. Mother Clark. <laughs> So yeah, uh, Tuba Fats was a was a sousaphone player, uh, obviously, uh, and uh, he actually lived upstairs in the in the seventies. So our uh, our apartment, oh. we're we're in Tuba Fats's old apartment. Please tell oh, me. Oh, you're oh. kidding! When I first moved in, there was a there was a there was a bathtub, and there were two crescents worn out of the enamel in the bathtub from from Tuba Fats, like butt cheeks. You know, it was, uh, wow, that's some yeah. butt cheeks. <laughs> yes. he, was, he, was, now, he was a big. Tuba Fats, so Tuba Fats was one of the people, him and Kirk Joseph are really responsible for the Dirty Dozen Brass Band, are really responsible for the idea that you could play a sousaphone more like a bass. Like a, a right. lot of the brass band music that came before that was kind of like a little oompa, oompa. And I'm going to say there's a guy who was with the Eureka Brass Band and his name was not Bird Tillman. Oh my God, I can't remember. The guy from the Eureka Brass Band and then yeah. there's Tuba Fats and then Kirk Joseph revolutionizes it and then it's off to the races with the Dirty Dozen and the Rebirth. And that whole sort of brass band revolution that you see coming out after that. Right. Now, Tuba Fats. So when I went to, when Peter and I went to stay with Christopher Butcher in the Treme, uh, and you're around the corner, is there a Tuba, Tuba Fats square or something? Yes, there is. There's a, okay. there's a square dedicated to him right there by the Candlelight Lounge. Yeah. I remember walking. We took a couple of photos around there. So that's yeah. right there. Yes. Okay. Very cool. Well, that was a nice bonus. I had no idea we were going to play that one. That's a very yeah. fun tune. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for sure. Yeah, nicely done. So, um, cocktails. Sad. Yes, I think we're going to start with this. Oh, oh, the obituary. Let's do the, the obituary. This sounds like a classic, though. Let's start with the obituary. Okay. Starting with the obituary. So, I'm going to pull up, so I'm going to pull up the video version with you telling us about it in the video, okay. correct? Yeah. And okay, then we're so going to, we'll, we'll play that through and then we'll kind of come back and add some stuff. Okay, perfect. So let me just uh, obituary cocktail, and I'm just going to grab that here. Um, da, 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 da. Whoops, I had it. So we're going to play it off of YouTube. And Bonnie set it all up for me nicely here. There it is. Uh, obituary. I'm very curious, and I'm sure everyone else is as, as well. So here goes. Let's see. Thanks, guys. This is fascinating. <laughs> really great. Oh, great. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, like, oh, my gosh. Okay, so, oh, let me just pause it because I, want, I want to, don't want to miss the beginning. Okay, coming back, sharing my screen, and we should be good. If I can find you. There we go. <laughs> ah, technology. It's wonderful. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. Okay, let's give it a go. Making an obituary. Here we go. Yay. And go. Hi, thirsty friends. I'm going to be making an obituary cocktail. This is a little bit of a spooky take on a gin martini. You're going to replace some of the vermouth with absinthe, so you get to feel very Victorian and dramatic about the whole thing. <laughs> um, we are using Heyman's Old Tom Gin, but you can really use whatever gin you have. It's very spirit forward, so definitely use something that you like. There's nothing really to cut the alcohol. If you don't like the taste of gin, you don't like the taste of absinthe, this is not going to be the drink for you. So we're going to do two ounces of gin over some crushed ice. And if you don't have, we're using lucid absinthe. If you don't have that, you can use some herb saint, you can use a pastis, anything with that black licorice flavor. I love any excuse to use absinthe, and then I feel like I'm drinking something in an Edward Glory illustration. <laughs> Quarter ounce that. Dry vermouth. Quarter ounce as well. Nice vigorous stir. And strain into a chilled glass. It's very warm here, so these glasses are already sweaty. We've learned that's the move now. <laughs> <laughs> 
skeleton is optional, but it's nice to have a little friend to think with. Cheers. Oh, nice. <laughs> Whoops. Let me just stop sharing the screen. And cheers. Cheers. You're, you're just doing nice. your Manhattans, but that was an obituary. <laughs> so tell us, tell us about absinthe. Oh, uh, well, I was going to say, so the thing, again, back to cocktails and, and not having to break the bank. And Lucid is actually kind of expensive, even even down here. But um, Right. And, and I said herb sand, but, you know, herbs, herb sand, again, because it's cheap. You might be able to get Perno or Ricard up there. So it would definitely be about, it's just about a little bit for the for the flavor. Oh, I use absinthe in mine, too, right? So Yeah. Duh. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. It's the common thing. So, right. so, so, so let me just ask quickly, because living in France, I was familiar with Ricard, and then mm -hmm. like in Greece they have Ouzo. It's the mm -hmm. one when you add it, it goes cloudy, tastes yeah. like licorice. Is that yeah. what absinthe is like as well? It's absinthe very is similar. What, absinthe is similar. One of those. So uh. it was, it was, and what happened is, I guess, I, I, you know, there's toulouse Lautrec and that whole sort of tradition and whatnot, and then somehow someone, someone like, went crazy and murdered a bunch of people and they said he was on absinthe and so they banned absinthe. It was like, you know, it was like the mess crazy. of the 1890s or what have you. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but... Well, and supposedly the wormwood content is different now and that's why it's legal and it doesn't actually cause hallucinations or But But what's something. interesting is that, hmm. is that so the, the, the thing about Lucid is that, so when I was, uh, I guess part of more of the Davis story is uh, right after Hurricane Katrina, the Minister of Culture from France, René Donald Dudevab gave all the artist residencies to New Orleans residents, uh, New Orleans musicians. So I went and was living in an abbey in Fontevraud, which is in the Loire Valley. <laughs> so the Loire Valley in Kish Watering, that's, um, I was like between Sancerre and Chenon and like all this, like, so it's like for, in terms of like dry white wine, all the great stuff. But yeah. um, there's a, there's a town called Samur, S-A-M-U-R, and um, there, in there, there was a distillery, oh. the Combier distillery. Combier uh, invented triple sec. Okay. 16, whatever. But then they wow. just silly falling hard times. Now, Ted Bro is a guy from Lafayette, Louisiana. Let's get into the pace of KDN. And he was tired of being in the petroleum business. So he bought some old bottles of absinthe, retrofitted the chemistry, and then came up with an absinthe recipe. So he bought one quarter of the Combier distillery, and that's where he's making lucid absinthe. So wow. I was able to walk the 11 kilometers down the hill from Fontevraud to visit him with him and some more. And, and, um, his, and crawl back all, up the hill, I guess. Yes. No? <laughs> all of his it's a long walk. <laughs> his alambics were designed by Gustav Eiffel uh, just right before oh. he got commissioned to do the tower. So it's a, it's some beautiful things that I had on the laptop that lost all my data uh, 15 years ago, as opposed to the laptop that lost all my data last week. So uh, uh, uh -oh. zeros and ones, they are passing things. They are, they are, but all the memories are up here, right? So, yeah, exactly. Wow, what year was that? Did you say? Uh, Two thousand six. Wow, amazing, amazing. So Lucid is still going strong. So fourteen yeah. years later, his because uh, when yeah, you said a distillery that fell upon hard times, I was like, wow, really? That happens, huh? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. But Columbia had fallen upon hard times. It's like I said. So Ted Bro like rented one quarter of it, and that's what. And yes, Lucid is still. It's sort of funny because I found like the original bottle of Lucid I had had like this much left, you know? So we went yeah. photo and now it's like, and, and I think I'm just saying it was like, it, it was like 30 bucks. And now this, now it's like, there's a new, new label and it's 60 bucks. I'm like, same recipe. They, they must've just gotten better, I guess. So, oh, wow. Is it, but, is it like a can, tall skinny bottle? Is it a yeah. nice looking bottle? Yeah, Probably nice very designed. Bottle. Can't, uh, I mean, um, but again, when we're saying making cocktails, I would dare to say, you know, I think you make rye whiskey in Canada. You know, you could take a Canadian whiskey Anyone right. who's listening and watching at home who doesn't want to spend a bunch of dough and have a nice cocktail, you can really just get some some Perno or some Ricard and yeah. some Canadian rye for to make a Sazerac or or uh, or you know the gin if you're making the obituary. Don't there's yeah. no need to go crazy or break your bank to make cocktails. Well, it's yeah. also about drink what you like. You know, if you really yeah. enjoy Hello. a particular kind of gin or whiskey, and the recipe for the cocktail says you need this specific kind, drink what you like. Yeah, if you exactly. if it tastes good to you, that's what matters. Your house, your rules. That's exactly, and I'm just loving the whole infuse. I'm just thinking, oh, what can I find to just you know some old spices well, yeah, we really and. Fun to play. The, yeah, that's a lot of fun. We went blueberry picking the other day, and we cool. were gonna we were gonna do blueberry infused vodka, but we ate the blueberries. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's all good and no we pie. We did some <laughs> drinks for a while. Yeah, there were some blueberry and drinks. That's actually how, good. 
how I learned to make the obituary in the first place. It's because, you know, he's doing the live streams from home because that's the way to get music out to people right now. Yes. And we have this little bit where on Wednesday nights, every so often I come down with a cocktail and present it because you may be able to tell that I'm a bit of a ham as well. I like yes, my you are. attention <laughs> uh, just as much as he does. So my little yeah. thing is I get to come in and have a, a, a cocktail that I present. And I so nice. decided at some point that it needed to be a different cocktail every week. And, you know... You're wow, not making fun. a grocery run all the time now. You're doing it when you can. So at one yeah. point I was kind of, you know, what what have I not made with what we have? And I'm Googling and I'm Googling and this is where I discovered the obituary. Very cool. So what would you say the craziest thing you've come up with just by having to kind of look in the cupboard and get creative so far would be the obituary or? Um, well, oh, that's, not, oh, that's, not from, that. that's not from from looking in the cupboard. The obituary, I think, is the most interesting thing that came out of it. Um, Especially the name. <laughs> but the, uh, and, and the interesting thing about the obituary is that, um, it, or an interesting thing about the obituary is that supposedly it was invented in Lafitte's blacksmith shop, which is, you know, just down the street from us, too. Wow. And uh, that's that's sort of cool. They um, Also, the only place where I will actually order a hurricane, because they still make it with real fruit. So, tip, which pro tip. It, so where is where is that in New Orleans? Which which Lafitte's venue? Lafitte's blacksmith shop. Lafitte's blacksmith shop. So best place to get a hurricane with yeah. real real uh, fresh fruit. Yes, because a lot of places now make it with powdered mix and it tastes like Kool Aid and I don't like it. Yeah, good to know. Good to know. But, um, See, pro tips direct from Crescent City. <laughs> but as far as weird stuff, yeah, um, I discovered recently. To my delight, and I think possibly Davis's chagrin, that a uh, peanut butter whiskey is a thing that exists. Oh my gosh! Which okay, if my husband was in on this show, oh my gosh! Don't <laughs> tell him. <laughs> so, so everybody out there just went, yay or <laughs> no, me. Uh. <laughs> Either you think this is a delight or an abomination. There is no in-between. There is no in-between. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but I'm having fun with it. Um, I, I love peanut butter. It's one of my favorite flavors. So I... I like peanut butter on a sandwich. Right. Let's leave it at that. So what's in this now? My goodness. It's, we're getting more, a, more, more than we bargained for with you guys. <laughs> it is a whisk. It's called Screwball. There are others, but Screwball is the one that I've been using. Um, yeah. It is a whiskey that tastes like peanut butter. Oh, come on. I, I don't know what their process is. It's very sweet. It's very, you can drink it over ice just as a dessert by I itself. Bet you you can. don't need to add anything to it. Uh, I think it would be great over ice cream. I, I was just going to say, yet, ice cream. Delicious. Or in Screwball. A <laughs> but I have been doing a peanut butter and jelly cocktail, which is um, a bit of the peanut butter whiskey and then a bit of black cherry shrub for the jelly. Ooh. Because I feel like the vinegar and the shrub kind of gives it a tartness that balances the extreme sweetness of the peanut butter whiskey. <laughs> oh and my then gosh. A little bit of coffee and cocoa bitters. Oh and then wow. And garnishing with a teeny tiny sandwich, which is the best part. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> so, when are you guys opening your cocktail lounge? <laughs> or, like, seriously, like piano bar cocktails? Well, you know, no? shut down bars again. So. Yeah, bars get yeah. shut down again. So oh, tell food. us. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, tell us a bit about that. So you guys were in phase three. Basically, uh -oh. basically the, story, three. the story oh, okay. is, is that New Orleans was bad. New Orleans was a hellscape. But because we are a, a, a diverse, liberal, somewhat educated society that believes in science. Go science. Go science. That uh. you follow the rules as prescribed by science. And we, New Orleans, brought it all down. We stayed home. We wore our masks. We stayed home. Nice. We wore our masks. Everybody out there, wear your masks. Wash your yeah. Meanwhile, yeah. Everybody in the northern half of the state, who I can tell you, and I, 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 I have relatives from Shreveport, so I just cannot possibly think less about the northern half of the state than I do. Much respect, you know. But mm. right, they, they are not following the rules, and they're also like walking around without their, you know. Now, now we're spiking again. Thank you, Northern Louisiana. Wow. So when did your bar shut down again? Uh, actually, Saturday. Uh, Saturday. 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 Yeah, I played my show and I then we had to go. So. Oh, sorry to hear that. Yeah, yeah. well, mm. so, yeah, um, yeah. Maybe we should um we should jump on over to the Sazerac. We're actually Let's... like three quarters of the way through oh, wow. the show. <laughs> I know we can. No, we're, we're not gonna do two hours. We're not gonna do a hard stop. Don't worry. This is fun. <laughs> so Sazerac. There are a lot of words that get said in our house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Sazerac fun hanging out with you guys. Is the original cocktail. This was the original first ever cocktail. Was the Sazerac. Now, Peychaud bitters were developed by an apothecary as a sort of a of a 
uh, of medicine. But then they discovered that if you take this medicine and you put it in with the cheap cognac, it makes it taste palatable. So, so what? Okay, wow. The Sazerac originally was you would coat the glass in absinthe, then okay. add some cognac, and then add pacho bitters, and that's part of the original recipe. But if we are... Uh, if we kick it over to the video, maybe we'll show the video and we can talk a little more. Yeah, perfect. So let me just do that. Very cool. And also, I don't know if you talk about it in the video, but um, they they serve they serve absinthe out of a very like Art Deco kind of. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah, the absinthe. Pitch. Oh, I mean that alone makes me want to have a shot or whatever it's called because yeah. it's yeah, pretty it's cool. Also, kind of a whole ceremony. A lot of presentation. It's in the presentation. Yeah. I saw it at one of the bars in New Orleans when I was there. I'm sure it's at several. Several, but yeah. But yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> okay, I think I'm... Okay, oh, let me just start it again. Uh, okay, here we go. Can you guys see that? Yep. Yes. Hi, Perfect. Everybody. This is Davis Rogan, and today I'm going to make a little film of me making a Sazerac. Uh, this is a traditional New Orleans drink that was used to take some ingredients that might not have been so great and still put together a drink that you can enjoy. Uh, we are actually going to be using some really fancy, lovely high-end stuff here called Lucid. Lucid is an absinthe, I'll talk about it at length. But um, you can also make it with good old Herb Saint. And, um, Unless Herb Saint's expensive. So mm. if you had Ricard or Pernod, and you just want to do just a little bit, fancy people, fancy people, uh, have it in the sprayer. And some other people throw it out, but I like to keep it. So basically what we're gonna do here is we're gonna kinda like coat the glass with just a smidge of this. And because it's my version, we're going to leave it in. Okay, now we're gonna take some crushed ice. And we're going to take Sazerac rye. You can use rye whiskey. The original Sazerac was made with cognac. Um, Basically, it was just the stuff was so bad that they just had to throw some other shit in there so that it could taste okay. It was stuff was so bad that, oh, uh, stuff. I busted, busted! No. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna take like an ounce and a half of rye whiskey. And I know you make some rye whiskey in Canada, so maybe there'll be one there. And some folks are big about using the Angostura bitters. Um, some people are only about pecho bitters. I myself am a pecho bitters man. So we're going to throw in some pecho bitters. One, two, three. Three. Now, a lot of people also say that you add an ounce and a half of simple syrup. This doesn't make any sense to me. There's a lot of sugar in here. So, I'm going to take that. Now, if you have a knife, you can just shave a little bit off of the um, lemon so you can get the lemon zest. Or if you're really fancy and you went to William Sonoma a bajillion years ago, then you have a zester and you'll do like this. I'm just going to cut on here. Oh, yeah. And there's a little twist of lemon. That oils. Mm -hmm. So, the idea is that the oil that's in the rind. Ah is what you want to release, the flavor. So take that inside bit of the oil on the rind. Again, we're gonna do a little bit of this here so this coats the glass. And then we're gonna take this amount of whiskey and bitters, strain it into here. And the strainer starts pouring all over the piano. <laughs> oh, is that the piano? Right, yeah. oh dear. And a certain amount of it made it all the way to the glass. This was the first video we filmed, so. <laughs> So, whoopsies, where are we? Yeah. There we are. Oh, the oil's in the, um, in the lemon. That's, that's yeah. great. Yeah. So, so using, it's like I said, some people use a sprayer. Uh, and again, here in Canada, you can get a, just get a, get a cheap rye. There's a, there's a rye whiskey called an Old Overholt or Old Overcoat, if you can say if you're above. And that really works just fine. Don't, don't go, don't get too fancy. Don't got to break the a, bank. Yeah. So a little, a little swirl it around the glass, or if you want to put it in a spray bottle, great. And then, you know, the, like I said, the whiskey, like about a, less than a half ounce of, of the uh, anisette liqueur. And then ounce and a half of whiskey. And then people add simple syrup. It doesn't make any sense to me. I think there's enough sugar in the bourbon. Or the right. Cognac. Wow. So, uh, 
Very that cool. Is the, uh, that is the, uh, and basically like when I was like eight, nine, when we, all, when we all went over to visit with my grandmother on the North Shore, uh, I would be in charge of making drinks. So this is the drink I used to make for all the grown-ups at Big Big Tray and bring them out to the grown-ups on the porch. That was the wow. first things I ever made. So would you say the Sazerac is probably like the most classic New Orleans cocktail? It's I'd quite... say it's the quintessential New Orleans cocktail. It's the first cocktail ever. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Your personal favorites in terms of cocktails. I know we've talked about a lot. And actually I have a, I have a question. Um, our friend Babs, who ha but I'll get to that in a second, who has some um, things in her garden. And she's wondering if you have a, have a recommendation. But what are your favorite cocktails? Ooh, that's a tough call. Ooh. Well... In the summertime, I really kind of just like a gin and tonic with a little bit of bitters, you know? Uh, yeah. But, because that's refreshing and it's hot out. Uh, what do you like? I like things that kind of as weird as possible. Um, but the Manhattan is one of our favorites because when I proposed, yes. I was in, we were in New York and uh, I proposed and we went to the Algonquin Hotel and had a couple of Manhattans and, and some cheesecake. So that yes. was Yes, uh, they heard us talking about... We, we were calling people and telling them we got engaged, and they heard us talking and brought us out some cheesecake and comped our drinks, and it was a delightful time. A also, nice the memory. Sazerac was our first stop um, first date, on our yeah. first date. So, yeah, some great places. Let's, let's talk about some places hey, in New Orleans. <laughs> Although, I, it's really hard for me to narrow it down because I do like the weird stuff, but um, I, I will go with my favorite place to have a cocktail, which is Three Muses. When they are back open, that will be the first place I will want to go. Is that um, on Frenchman Street? That is on yeah. Frenchman Street. Ah, yeah. Okay, is, I think I went there. And the cocktails are very creative and wonderful. Um, I think La Soldadera was my favorite of the last batch of things that they had going before they had to close. But, yeah. What is a cocktail? Like, what's the average price of a cocktail in New Orleans? Like, nine Depends on what US? kind of bar you go to. Yeah. Mm. What's the I'm cheapest just, cocktail you can get? About eight to 14. Eight, eight bucks eight? is the cheapest. And wow. And... You know, you could pay like to 20 bucks. you could pay New York prices if yeah. you go like close into the French Quarter and stuff like that. Yeah, so, but uh, I would say like you know New Orleans, could, you could get a really great cocktail somewhere for for eight to twelve dollars, whereas you know in other places in the states that would definitely be like sixteen to twenty. Wow, wow, wow! And there's um, I wish I'd written down the name. I have it written down somewhere. When when I stayed there last April, our concierge had some great tips on places to go. Ah, uh, and he told me about a really cool rooftop patio, but I guess there's several. I have to, I have to look Maybe that. the Roosevelt Hotel? Nope, that doesn't ring a bell. Hmm. But, um, <laughs> so some bars we like in uh, Bar Tonique is, uh, is a oh. place on Rampart Street that's uh, really good. We're looking forward to seeing them back. And Cure was the place on Ferret Street in the uh, Uptown where we went on our... Our first date. Yes, although even before our first date, the Sazerac Bar at the Roosevelt Hotel, which is a great place to have a Sazerac. And also, right. There's a film of me and Anthony Bourdain drinking Sazeracs in the Sazerac Bar. So uh, if you, there was an episode of The Layover where I was a guest, and actually the part that's just me and Tony talking and stuff is on my website. So davisrogan.com, there's a right. one of the well, piano that piece says videos. You can click on that and you can see me and Tony drinking Sazeracs. Okay, but cool. I'm just putting that up. Place. All yeah, no, great keep, place yeah. to go for beverages of, at any time. Um, I really love their holiday time um, beverages around Christmas time, New Year's. They have that's a beautiful wintry. bar. It's um, they oh. have a really great uh, hot buttered rum. That Ooh. I'm gonna I'm gonna hammer on my I love the garnishes. That's a tiny little donut. Yeah, nice. But also, yeah, the, the garnishes. First meal that Davis and I ever had together, we met up at the Sazerac bar beforehand, and this was the true test of of the relationship because. Um, we weren't even dating yet. We were just friends. We were meeting up. My mom was there. Um, we were just going to have dinner together, and that was our, our spot where we were going to all get together. And I was drinking a basil julep, and it was absolutely delicious. And Davis walked in, and I kind of stuck it in his face. and was like, this is so good. You have to try it. And then I had this heart-stopping moment where I was like, oh, my God, what if he's not a food sharer? <laughs> like, oh, no. You know, now, yeah. right in this moment right now, that's kind of horrifying. But at the time, <laughs> Yes, it and, was. Uh, yeah. But he grabbed it and swinged in. Oh, but, I see how it is. Now you're sharing. Well, and you you said it had basil in it, did you? It was yeah, it was a basically a, a variation on a mint julep with basil instead Ooh. of the mint. And okay. it was wonderful. Oh, and another great thing you can do with oh. basil now. We have a lemon ice. There's a company yes. called Bricados. And Bricados oh. makes a lemon ice, but you take take a scoop of lemon ice yeah. and two ounces of bourbon and put a sprig of basil on top of that. 
Oh, I think wow. the basil. Maybe a muddle the basil. A little metal, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, great segue to Babs's question, which I'll post. She says, she has so much chocolate mint in the garden. Do you have a certain cocktail that would suit chocolate mint? Well, I think you can make a chocolate mint, uh, mint julep. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, oh, perfect. Duh. Or but, use it as a garnish yeah, for a grasshopper. Oh, nice, yeah. Mint's always great for garnish. When I lived in France, they'd always use a mint leaf on desserts or just in the middle of the yeah. middle of the plate, yeah. Excellent. So uh, I can't believe how fast the time has gone. Um, Dave, did you want to do another tune to bring sure. it, take us out? Okay. Yeah, what do you great. What do you got for us? I've got a song called "You and Me," which I wrote about my lovely wife. Oh, you guys oh, are this is the part adorable. Where I get a, a little surprise uh, taste of what it's like when we do our live streams here, yes. and sometimes strange things happen. Something yeah, and strange. when when Wednesday nights, right? Five six thirty your yeah. time. Yeah, six thirty my time Wednesdays, and then um, twelve thirty. Uh, my time on Sundays, and Sundays right. is, uh, is also, that, so that's the one for the Europeans, too. So yeah. I'm going to do a tune called You and Me. It's a song about uh, being at the seaside with the one you love, and uh, Perfect. I hope you all dig it. Okay, and we've also posted, we're just going to keep it scrolling your, um, to tip the artist, so here we go. Oh, you guys are so too much. All right. Well, you're obviously quite compatible. <laughs> yes. Oh, so fun. Stephanie Davis, thank you so much. You bet. What a, what a great hour spent. Cocktails and more, you know, so much fun. We really look forward to meeting you live and in person very soon. Yeah, I want to come up there with the band. I really do. You know, I've, I've, I've actually, I had a lovely time. I've, I've made this really wonderful video 
of like crossing because I took the train from Toronto into uh, the Syracuse and just like oh. I crossed right, I, I went right by y'all, you know. Yeah. And, uh, I would love to. I've got a, I've got a bit of a following in Syracuse. I'd like to do a show in Buffalo and, and Toronto. That would Why be a perfect not? tour. We Why would, not? Let's do it. Let's, let's do, do it as soon as we can. So hopefully ne for the festival next year, because our um, Niagara Summer Mardi Gras, it's our second annual. The festival's mm -hmm. in year seven. But second annual with the Mardi Gras and just bringing New Orleans to the north, which is what we want yeah. to continue to do. Let's do that. Let's I love do it. it. Okay, I love fantastic. It. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to come and see you backstage to say an official goodbye. I'm just going to play some okay. promo videos for everybody. Sure. Once again, your, your tipping info will keep scrolling on the bottom there for everyone. Okay, that's great. Uh, yeah. I'd also like to thank, uh, let's give a shout out to Bonnie. You know, she's been really helpful putting this all together. And doing Absolutely. Bonnie, can I, can I bring you up to say hello? Yes, okay. I'd like to check. <laughs> okay. There's Bonnie backstage. Hey, hey. ta-da. Because I always see her in the back doing this and this. We'd like to thank Bonnie. She's been super helpful. Thank you. She's very She welcome. really has. And thank you for letting me come out from behind my usual tiny little voice in the background roll. <laughs> Listen, you're just a natural. <laughs> I really think you guys That's, should. I'm usually the background rule, so. <laughs> yeah, so I always like to check. But uh, honestly, Stephanie and Davis, open up that cocktail bar. <laughs> oh, yeah. So fun. Piano bar and cocktails? Perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So hopefully things will start to shift soon and we can, we can do that again. So thanks again. I'll see you backstage. Sure. Stay safe. Sure. And uh, we, yeah, thank you. We wish you all the best. Yeah, just everybody just wear a mask. I mean, please, science exactly. is real. You yeah. can yeah. believe in facts established by science. Science, yeah. And Do you guys, you heard it right Do here. That's, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, we just had, it was just past um, masks in inside now in the t town we live in here in St. Catharines. I think that just went through today, right, Bonnie? I think or so. yesterday? Yeah. yeah, which is good, you know, which is really good. Mm. So yeah, we yeah. Just got a statewide state statewide mask mandate as well. Statewide yes. in Louisiana. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. You got to do what you got to do, right? Yep. So yep. yeah, crush that curve. Your hands for sure. are uncomfortable too, but you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> exactly. Well, thanks so much, you guys. Yeah, that's a very good point. <laughs> yeah. Thanks again. I could do this like every day with you guys. It's so fun. <laughs> Likewise. Yeah, so thank you. And uh, we'll check out your stream every Wednesday and sure. Sunday. And Wednesdays, right? Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. and Sundays at 12.30 p.m. But just check out Davis Drogan at Facebook.com or uh, get friend, uh, if you can friend, or I, I might have more than 5,000 people, but you can also go to Davis Rogan Music. And if you Perfect. like Davis Rogan Music on Facebook, I'll be uh, keeping people updates about what time I'm playing. Excellent. I'm sure you'll yeah. post it in the comments there. Yeah. yeah. And so you'll get some yeah. new fans for sure. Thanks awesome. again. Yeah. Stay, stay safe and I'll talk to you in a sec. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Good night. So once again, everyone, Davis and Stephanie Rogan live from you for you from the Crescent City, New Orleans. And it's Mardi Gras, Niagara's online summer Mardi Gras this Saturday from 3 p.m. until 8 p.m. Go to our website, NiagaraJazzFestival.com. I believe right now our home slide, you can just click it and you'll get all of the info. But let me play you our promo video. This just in from the lovely Karina, who's uh, in Trinidad. And I think she was tuned in earlier. So a big shout out to Karina. And if I do this right, I can play this um, new promo video that will be going live on CHCH as of tomorrow. And we're going to have this promo video going even after Mardi Gras because the thing is... If you can't tune in on Saturday, it will be up on our Facebook and YouTube channel forever, so you can tune in afterwards as well. So here we go. There you have it. And that's also the music of the uh, Delfeo Marsalis and the Uptown Jazz Orchestra, who are, are our headliners this year. So excited. This Friday, we're going to get started early with uh, New Orleans because we're going to be live with Christopher Butcher 
down in the Treme, just um, a few doors over, I believe, from Davis and Stephanie. And that will be this Friday from 7 p.m. until 8 p.m. And then again, Mardi Gras, 3 p.m. until 11 p.m. We'll go back and forth. We have a little parade here in Port de Luzi, Port Weller, that will be live streamed. And everybody's at a safe distance, of course. Then we go to a parade down in New Orleans, and we're going to go back and forth with all the lovely bands that you saw mentioned there. Here's something really cool, too. If you don't want to cook or make your cocktails, although you can, you can also, if you're here locally, get them from the Grantham House, and that's on our website. Uh, there's a page, Sip and Savor page. And basically, uh, you have a choice of, I think it's jambal you get jambalaya, you get a, a beignet-inspired donut, and you get cocktails. You get a hurricane, you get ingredients to make your hurricane, and a whiskey rosemary lemonade. Then we have Christopher Smith, who's going to be showing you how to put your cocktails together. You get it all in your takeout, though, which is really cool. And then he'll show you how to put it together. And he'll probably show you options as well if you're not getting the takeout version but want to make a hurricane or a whiskey lemonade at home. So that's all between 3 and 11 p.m. And we're super excited. And we're still secretly hoping we can have a small gathering so we can sell a few VIP tickets. But if not, everybody can enjoy from the comfort of their own home. So NiagaraJazzFestival.com is our website. Juliet Dunn signing off. Oh, and wait, let me just throw this in too. Uh, tune in as well. We're going to do one of our Shady News Niagara broadcasts, which we haven't done for a while because it got kind of busy. But we're going to do one on Thursday. I'm going to put it out there 4 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube. And that will be with ba Barbara Worthy, a.k.a. Babs, and myself. Okay, I've said enough. Check out this slide for our end slide. Have a great night. Stay safe. And we'll see you Thursday or Friday or Saturday. Take care.